Southeast Comedy Joint in Indianapolis and Comcast present Trial by Laughter. Local, regional, and national stand-up comedians compete for cash and prizes. Each comic is scored by a panel of three judges and a fourth judge, the live audience. Trial by Laughter with your host, Chris Bauer. Welcome to Trial by Laughter Season 8. It's the finals. Are you guys ready for a show? Are you guys ready? Give it up right now for your first comic, Brad Cotter. Dude, this is awesome. It's electric in here. A lot of different types of white people. <laughs> I don't think I ever performed in front of so many homeowners before. <laughs> this is insane. This whole front row looks cool. This is like the last supper with my grandma as Jesus, just chilling in the middle, <laughs> going hard, just eating her salad on the side in between comics because she doesn't want to bite. And she's like, look, I have an elephant on my sweater, just like a regular old woman would. <laughs> You're awesome. My real grandma thinks I'm so dumb because the only reason I know how to spell bananas is because of a Gwen Stefani song. <laughs> Every time I spell that word, I'm like, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. I need Gwen Stefani to come out with a song called Definitely. <laughs> how do you spell that word? D-E-F-I-N-I-T, who knows? For me, writing the word definitely is like a snowflake because it's never the same twice. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'll do something else. What's up to the balcony, sold out show? <laughs> Be careful, that's where Lincoln got shot. <laughs> never know, keep watching behind you. Shout out to the group of black people, they sat right here in the front. <laughs> so when the cameras go, they go, it's not all white people at Morty's. <laughs> It's diverse. You guys are awesome. And then we got this camera just slowly moving back and forth like a drunk person, like, yeah. Do you guys even remember the good old days when you had to put film in a camera? You for sure remember, right? <laughs> back when someone would take a picture and it took at least one hour to find out that you're ugly. <laughs> now with technology and digital cameras, it's instant. Somebody takes a picture, like, oh my God, See my picture? All right, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All you gotta do is hit the red button, okay? Are you ready? Thank you so much. Okay, here we go. One, two, ah -ha -ha. <laughs> Suck it in. <laughs> Instagram. Mm. Thank you so much. Can I see the picture? Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. What the heck? <laughs> Delete. Could you just take one more? I'm so sorry. It's like, nah, you're just kind of ugly. <laughs> Every photo is going to be the same. Don't awe that. You guys are all beautiful people. She goes, yeah, and then pointed to her husband. That's messed up. Ah, <laughs> oh, dude, I just want to be as rich as you people here. I didn't even know I was poor until the girl was like, what kind of cologne are you wearing? And I was like, Febreze, let's do this. Boom. <laughs> I smell like mangoes and linen. What up? I try to do so many different hustles for money, like I try to donate some blood for some extra money, but they wouldn't take it because I have tattoos. And then I try to donate some sperm for some extra money, but they wouldn't take it because it wasn't mine. <laughs> the doctor's like, where did you get this? And I go, don't ask questions, it's been a long day. I don't even have health insurance. The closest thing I have to health insurance is that blood pressure machine you stick your arm into inside of CVS. <laughs> you ever go in there for a checkup, you stick your arm in the machine, it's just <laughs> Don't know what that means, guess I'm good. Let's roll. <laughs> I'm healthy. I wanna be healthy, but I do messed up things. Like I secondhand smoked crack once. It wasn't my fault. I blame Whole Foods because it happened in their parking lot. <laughs> right, because in my neighborhood, right, they put a Whole Foods in the hood, which you think would be like the first step to gentrification, right? Like you put a Whole Foods in a bad neighborhood and eventually the gangbangers are gonna be like, I ain't paying $7 for an apple, I'm out. 
not in my neighborhood. These fools found a loophole. So now they go to Whole Foods and they steal the apples and they're getting stronger because they're only eating organic. <laughs> so now I got all these gangsters walking around my neighborhood with no GMOs in their system and they ain't messing with Monsanto on any level whatsoever. <laughs> they're just like going hard. But I secondhand smoke crack. You can judge me all you want, it was kind of tight. Here's how it went down. I was smoking some weed with my friend. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah. I smoke weed, okay? And we're passing a joint back and forth in the car. And my friend sees this like crackhead walking down the street and his arms are all messed up like this. And he's walking. My friend goes, dude, I seen that fool last week at 7-Eleven trying to buy a, a Swisher Sweet Blunt with his teeth. And I go, what are you talking about? He goes, his arms didn't work, so he had money in his mouth. And he was like, give me a blunt. Ah, ah, <laughs> ah. I go, what did he do? He went, oh, oh. <laughs> so now we're just in the car laughing, going back and forth, just, oh, 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 And it's all fun and games until this fool starts walking towards my window full speed. I think that's why his arms were like this, to go faster, you know? <laughs> like just whoosh, cutting through the air. So he's coming at my window, and my first reaction is like, no, 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 go home, go to bed, go, go. I don't have any money, get out of here. He goes, I don't want your money, roll your window down. I go, not happening, dude, get out of here. I look at my friend, he goes, do it. <laughs> do it. So I roll the window down and then immediately this fool like encroaches on our personal space, like sticks his head in the Civic and starts looking around all crazy. Like, have you seen Jurassic Park? <laughs> like, you know when the Raptor's in the kitchen looking for the kids and he's just like, what's going on? <laughs> like that's what he started doing. So I go, get out of here. He goes, reach in my pocket. <laughs> reach in my pocket. I go, get out of here. I'm not touching anything on you. I look at my friend, he goes, do it. <laughs> so I reach in his pocket and I pulled out a crack pipe. And dude, this thing had some miles on it. Like it was resonated from the 80s, smelled like a Duran Duran song. <laughs> like everything about it was shady, right? So he goes, put it in my mouth. So I put it in his mouth, he bites it in between his teeth like this, and he goes. <laughs> spits a crack rock from his mouth into the pipe. <laughs> he put a bullet in the chamber with no hands. <laughs> I have so many questions, okay? Like where did he keep the crack rock? How many windows did he knock on? <laughs> before he found an able-bodied individual to help him in this scenario, okay? So now he's got it locked and loaded. He goes, light that. So I take the lighter and I light it and he goes <laughs> Like for so long, I had to stop lighting it because my thumb started burning. <laughs> you know how long that is? Because I guess it's true what they say, you lose one sense or one ability and your other senses are heightened. So he like lost the ability to have legit arms like a regular person, but then gained the ability to smoke crack like an Olympic level swimmer, you know? <laughs> So I stopped, and you don't do that mid-hit. He went, uh, uh keep going. And I just went, I'm sorry, Dad, and I lit it again. <laughs> so he takes the hit and then goes, <laughs> blows it all in my face, all in the Civic. I'm not gonna lie, as soon as he did that, I went like this. <laughs> I just wanted to feel alive for like one minute, and instantly it was a bad idea, because in my head I lost two teeth, I took apart a VCR, like it wasn't a good move for me. So now he's just sitting there laughing. He goes, ha, 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 take the pipe out of my mouth. Take the pipe out of my mouth. I go, dude, go home. And I rolled the window up and he goes, you don't know how to party. Takes his hand and takes the pipe out of his mouth. <laughs> his hand worked. I don't know if the crack activated his hands and he got all cracktivated, you know? You guys are awesome. I'm Grant Cotter. Thank you very much. Jenna Fuzz Mike, Trooper Money Slang. Aw, scram. I'm Chris Mike, Jubby Robot, and y'all gonna lean up and kiss bed. Peace, Charlie, get town down. <laughs> Toot face, dummy way. Rona Brood. What? With the top 100 shows preloaded, huh. Xfinity is perfect for people who want to join the conversation. Catch up on the shows everyone is talking about. Get started with the Xfinity X1 Triple Play from Comcast for $99 a month for a whole year. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit Comcast.com today. 
What if a home phone could also be a smartphone? And what if that home phone could save you money on your home and wireless bill at the same time? With Xfinity Voice, you get amazing technology like readable voicemail on your smartphone, caller ID on your TV, and even text messaging, all for a low price. Start saving with unlimited nationwide talk and text and switch to Xfinity Voice for just $19.99 a month for 12 months. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. I'm almost done. Now you can pay your bill. Manage your appointments. And check your connection status. Anytime, anywhere. Oh, so you're protesting? Okay. Introducing Xfinity My Account. Available on any device. Hey, uh, you guys like jokes? That sucks, so here we go. Uh, on my fifth birthday, my grandma told me about her fifth birthday. Uh, they had a farm, and on the farm they had a donkey. And the donkey got ran over by a tractor, and it had to get a full body cast. And when it came back to the party, everybody thought it was the pinata, so they beat it to death. Uh, then she told me that the candy was terrible, so <laughs> that was that's pretty cool to hear when you're five. Uh, then on my sixth birthday, I had my first existential crisis. I was uh, I was in the park, playing hide and seek alone, and I couldn't even find myself. Uh, the next day in school, the teacher told us to use our inside voices. And I thought, oh no, I'm the only one in this class that can't read minds. Uh, and then I thought, oh no, I gave it away. Uh, that same year, our teacher taught us that British people drive on the other side of the road, and I thought, Man, that must be pretty cool to drive upside down. <laughs> I want to go there. I'm still not sure what happens when an orphan steps on a crack. I'll let you finish, it's cool. Uh, does anybody ever uh, like to lay underneath the stars and think about how the first time they ever ran away from home was when they were born? Anybody? Like weird vagina jokes? All right. <laughs> Whatever. Well, you know what they say, if the shoe fits, uh, then you should have bought two. Pretty... Pretty basic stuff. Uh, I went to a skeptics meeting, but I don't think I went. <laughs> I was put under house arrest for burning down my own house, so they just let me go. Uh, but I uh, built a new house. I built a new house. I built it out of boomerangs in case a tornado ever hits. <laughs> that joke is way better than you thought. <laughs> it's like, think about it for like a second. I'll give you a second. All right, now laugh. More. 
I was doing some yard work uh, today. I planted two trees in my front yard so that I can buy a hammock in 20 years. <laughs> It'd be pretty cool. I also replaced my roof with mirrors so that the birds feel like they're trapped. <laughs> I don't even know they're mine. They're my pets. Uh, my brother, my brother was named after my dad uh, because my dad was born way before my brother. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody think that's a joke? All right. I think that's just basic common knowledge. Uh, but my brother, he was almost, uh, when he was a kid, he was almost killed by a car uh, because he thought that look both ways meant up and down. I was hanging out with my deaf cousin, and simultaneously he broke both of his hands, but he had no way of telling me. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not married. What? <laughs> uh, you? No way. All right. I'm not married, uh, but if I ever do get married, I'm going to wear the ring on a necklace instead of on my ring finger uh, because I feel that if I ever got my ring finger cut off, I would have to explain to my wife how I lost my ring and my finger. Uh, but if I ever got my head cut off, I wouldn't have to tell her anything. <laughs> and that's better for <laughs> everybody. <laughs> I, uh, I really wanted to learn how to read Braille, so I decided I was going to get the book on Braille. I went to the bookstore, and they were all out of the book on Braille, but they did have the audio book on Braille. Uh, so now I know Morse code, which is <laughs> pretty cool, All right? I went nude skydiving. Uh, the instructor who I was attached to was pissed. <laughs> I. Uh, I got a call from my bank the other day. They said, Mr. Naylor, you've been approved for a student loan. I said, awesome, I'll pick her up next week. <laughs> uh, I'll let you decide what that joke means. I don't, <laughs> I don't care, it's just a joke. All right. You knew that. I don't know, I'm doing pretty well for somebody who was born illiterate. That one's a slow bleeder, all right. <laughs> hey, if blood really is thicker than water, then concrete could be so much stronger. Anybody? I said bleeder, I was like, yeah, tell a blood joke. It's not bad. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> it sucks, all right. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I carry around a suicide note in my back pocket at all times. Uh, so that no matter how I die, it'll look like I was in control. <laughs> All it says is I did this on purpose. Uh, so if you ever see a news story that says, uh, world famous stand-up comedian, I hope they call me that. <laughs> world famous person, <laughs> human being found in a, <laughs> chopped up in a concrete filled oil drum. Uh, just know they found the note, and it was God's will, so <laughs> don't worry about it. If you are a Christian and your name is Will, uh, then you are God's will, and uh, even God hates it when you say that, so uh, shut up, Will. Nobody likes you. Wow, what a closer. Thanks a lot. How's it going? Nice to meet you guys. I have these two laptops. We're gonna each download a TV show. I'm gonna download it on Xfinity, and you guys are gonna download it with AT&T U-verse. And we're gonna see who goes faster. Go. Well, this is a no-brainer so far. How's AT&T doing? Struggling. I'm ready to go. We'll wait for you guys. 
looks like we're gonna be waiting for a while. Don't let Uverse slow you down. Upgrade to an Xfinity X1 Triple Play from Comcast and save when you bundle. See for yourself. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit Comcast.com today. Hey, uh, can you help me move? Oh, you know what? I'm stuck at the office. Hi, I'm moving. No problem, sir. You can get your Xfinity services installed on the date you choose or have a self-install kit sent to your new home. Thank you. Finally get some help moving. Call 1-855-MOVE-EDGE today. All the action of every Indianapolis Indians home game live all season long on Comcast Channel 90. Wood Innovative Group LLC, video and multimedia production, single camera, multi camera, live, post edit, everything. Click wigtv.com. Will Barnes! Yeah. Hello. St Stand-up comedy is my dream job. It's a good dream job because you don't need money in your dreams. <laughs> I'm glad I've got it because as a kid I didn't have I have many ways to express myself. Like, I had one way. I told the world about me, Will Mars, with the pictures on the front of my pajamas. And I used that outlet exclusively to tell people about the good work being done by the A-Team. <laughs> when I got older, I started wearing music T-shirts, uh, Nirvana T-shirts specifically. Because I wanted teenage girls to look at me and think, oh, Will's into Nirvana, that's cool. I think I'm going to sleep with him. That's what I wanted to happen. That was the only way I was going to get those girls back to my house so that I could tell them about the good work being done by the A-team. <laughs> my friends, they, um, they all express themselves with tattoos. Tattoos are just Instagram with commitment. <laughs> it's like, I feel passionately about that. I think I'm going to stab it into my skin in Latin. Why Latin? It's like there's some guy thinking he's going to impress a woman with his language ability. It's like, <laughs> carpe diem, Sharon. That means seize the day. Who discovers the phrase carpe diem means seize the day and then waste a day having it printed on their skin? <laughs> like, well done, mate. You just scarred yourself with a motto you don't live by. <laughs> See, I don't get tattoos because I think everyone has them now. I don't want to be the same as everyone else. That's why I don't want to get old. I think when you get old, you start to look like everybody else that's old. My mother doesn't think she looks her age. I think she looks like everyone her age. When we go out into town, she blends into anything over 60. Now, I knew I'd lose her one day. I just didn't think this would be how it happened. She'll say things to me like, William, will you pick me up from the hairdressing salon? I'm like, get a distinctive haircut. Because at the minute, I don't know which one you are. <laughs> it's either this or we need to get you tattooed, mother. <laughs> we need to get a tattoo of your younger face on top of this generic old lady face. I don't have kids, which is harder than having kids. Because when you become a parent, all you really do is you become a link runner in a relay race. You're saying, I've done my part, here's the baton, this is on you. If you don't have kids, you're saying, I'm brave enough to be the anchor runner. I'm brave enough to take this race home. I'm saying to my ancestors, this is what we trained for. Thousands of years of Mars family struggle and work, and I've gambled that for this. <laughs> and you're laughing, so perhaps they didn't die for nothing. 
Truth is, I only do stand up for one thing. I dream one day I could be rich and famous. Now, I only want to be rich and famous for one thing, too. I want to one day have enough money to finance my very own gold digger. <laughs> that is all I have ever wanted. My friends are like, but she would only want you for your money. I'm like, but I would have money. <laughs> all I want to do is take a gold digger on dates for fast food. That's all I've ever wanted. Just to mess with people's minds. I just want people to look at us and think, her with him, he must have money. <laughs> but, but why are they in Wendy's? <laughs> That's all I want. In my 20s, I slept with a lot of women, but I'm making up for that now. <laughs> I'm bringing my average down to respectable levels. <laughs> I'll tell you why I did it. It's because I lived in Spain for around 10 years. I lived near a lot of British tourist resorts. So me and my friends would go out every night for three or four beers. And every second night on average, I would pull a girl. And so eight pints, one woman. I was getting a girl to the gallon. <laughs> I don't have friends that, I don't really have any friends now. But that, I suppose you only need three friends in your life. You need a man, a woman, and a loser. Male advice, female advice, and someone to make you feel better about yourself. That's <laughs> all you really need. Thank you, mate. <laughs> I wrote that part for him. I said, just be annoying at the six minute mark. <laughs> I think you should be the best, or you shouldn't bother. It's like, oh, do you think you could win that marathon? No. Do you think you could ever win that marathon? No. Quit. <laughs> oh, but I got a personal best. I've got a personal best. What? So even you can beat you. <laughs> Cosmetic surgery, that's just another way of saying, here's some money I used to have. <laughs> When I see someone that's been under the knife, I don't see a beautiful person, I just see how I would have spent that money. <laughs> like car payments, rent, two weeks in Jamaica. <laughs> Before I moved to America, the police took my driving license off me, and I need to tell you this, I've never broken the law in a car, but my car has been caught speeding a lot. <laughs> In the UK, I'm sure it's similar here, you get a letter to your house and it says, uh, Dear William, uh, we caught your car speeding. We caught your car speeding. Were you with him? Because if you were, we're going to give you a £100 fine, like $150, and then either a speed awareness course or three points on your licence. So I wrote back to them and I said, yeah, I was with the car send me the punishment. They wrote back to me, they said, here's your £100 fine, but you were going too fast to qualify for a speed awareness course. <laughs> I'll repeat that, shall I? <laughs> I was going too fast to learn about the danger of speed. <laughs> Somewhere there was police officers talking about me, going, hey, hey up, Bill, this guy's doing some speed, isn't he? He's like, yeah, but there's no way he's not aware of it. I've been Will Mars. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Hey, Jenna Fuzz, Mike, Trooper Money Slang. Aw, scram. I'm Chris Mike, Jubby Robot, and y'all gonna lead up in Kiss Bed. Peace, Charity, get town down. <laughs> Toot face, dummy way. Rona Brood. What? With the top 100 shows preloaded, Huh. Xfinity is perfect for people who want to join the conversation. Catch up on the shows everyone is talking about. Get started with the Xfinity X1 Triple Play from Comcast for $99 a month for a whole year. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit Comcast.com today. What if a home phone could also be a smartphone? And what if that home phone could save you money on your home and wireless bill at the same time? With Xfinity Voice, you get amazing technology like readable voicemail on your smartphone. Caller ID on your TV and even text messaging, all for a low price. 
Start saving with unlimited nationwide talk and text and switch to Xfinity Voice for just $19.99 a month for 12 months. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. I'm almost done. Now you can pay your bill. Manage your appointments. And check your connection status. Anytime, anywhere. Oh, so you're protesting? Okay. Introducing Xfinity My Account. Available on any device. For Lucas Waterford! I'm better than most people. <laughs> and not because of my disability, but because of the stupid shit people say to me constantly. Like the other day, I was rolling down the street and I was stopped at a crosswalk. And this woman came right up next to me and she said, may I pray for you? And I said, sure. Thinking that she would pray away from me Like in private, <laughs> at her own home. But no, she proceeded to put her hand on my shoulder and yell, Jesus Christ, please heal this man from his head down to his toes. And at first I was pissed. But then I looked at her. I looked at my feet. I looked at her. I looked at my feet. I looked at her. I go, it's working. <laughs> It's working! I can feel! I can feel! And she starts speaking in tongues. Blah, 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 blah. And I go, I can feel! And a third man walks up to us and he goes, Please, sir, stop mocking that mentally handicapped woman. <laughs> people ask weird questions about my condition, you know? They always ask, Did I, do I feel out of place in social situations? And I'm like, I used to. I used to feel out of place. I used to feel like an outcast, like I didn't belong. But then I started drinking with other alcoholics. <laughs> So I feel more part of the group now. I feel more comfortable. You know, I don't know if I'm an alcoholic or not. Um, it's hard to tell nowadays, you know? The definition is too loose. It's hard to tell. The questions they ask are too loose. Like, do you drink when you're depressed? Well, yeah. I want to be happy. <laughs> Do you drink when you're alone? Well, when I'm alone, I'm depressed. <laughs> We've been through this. You keep asking the same question. I think by our definition, anyone could be an alcoholic. I think by our definition, anyone could be. I think by our definition, Jesus Christ himself was an alcoholic. <laughs> Could you imagine Jesus in AA? <laughs> Hello, my name is Jesus Christ <laughs> of Nazareth. <laughs> I'm the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega. And yes, I'm an alcoholic. I first realized I had a problem when I would go to parties. And when the parties were over, instead of just going home, I would start turning all the water into wine. <laughs> oh, 
And, and um, I'm a mean drunk, so what I would do, I would go to Temple and just start flipping all the tables <laughs> over. And then I started doing something weird. I don't know why. I started washing random women's feet. I don't know why I did this. I thought that's what they wanted. Um, the game, the prostitutes. Uh, I don't make much on a carpenter's salary. So I would have to pay them with whatever I have, which is eternal life. Um, then my father forsaked me, and uh, I had a hangover la that lasted like three days. <laughs> but I've been sober ever since. <laughs> I've been sober for about 2017 years now. <laughs> and I do what every sober person does. I just sit around and judge people all day. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to hell for that joke. <laughs> I was going to hell long before that joke, though. Because little known secret, all crippled people go to hell. It's true. There's too many steps to get to heaven. <laughs> but... But we're trying to get it changed. We really are. We're trying to get it changed. But you see, heaven's a historical landmark. <laughs> so we can't get that stuff changed. But Peter yells down to us every now and then. He, uh, he says, how are you guys do doing down there? And we're like, you know, it's hell. It could be better, but we're all right. We're like, sorry, he's like, sorry about that. We got some big guys up here can lift you up. And we're like, no, we don't want to be a burden. <laughs> what about Jesus? Where, he, where is he? Oh, he's in a meeting or something. <laughs> well, we don't need a miracle. We just really need a ramp. That would be great. <laughs> Thank you. That's my time. going? Nice to meet you guys. I have these two laptops. We're going to each download a TV show. I'm going to download it on Xfinity, and you guys are going to download it with AT&T U-verse, and we're going to see who goes faster. Go. Well, this is a no-brainer so far. How's AT&T doing? Struggling. I'm ready to go. We'll wait for you guys. Looks like we're going to be waiting for a while. Don't let U-verse slow you down. Upgrade to an Xfinity X1 triple play from Comcast and save when you bundle. See for yourself. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit Comcast.com today. Hey, uh, can you help me move? Oh, you know what? I'm stuck at the office. Hi, I'm moving. No problem, sir. You can get your Xfinity services installed on the date you choose or have a self-install kit sent to your new home. Thank you. Finally get some help moving. Call 1-855-MOVE-EDGE today. All the action of every Indianapolis Indians home game live all season long on Comcast Channel 90. Wood Innovative Group LLC, video and multimedia production, single camera, multi camera, live, host edit, everything. Click wigtv.com. Well, I'm broke. Here's how broke I am. We were driving home, saw a sign on a pole that said lost dog, $300 reward. And my wife from the passenger seat was like, hey, Marty, 
Looks like I know what we're going to be doing all afternoon. <laughs> then my six-year-old son from the back is like, yeah, stealing dogs. <laughs> we made 2400 bucks last week, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's a smart kid. That's good. How do you punish your teenage daughter in today's world? What do you do? Take their phone, right? Take that phone away from that teenage girl. It's not enough, though. Let me help you out, parents. Here's what you do. Take your 16-year-old daughter's phone, but don't just take it. Leave it logged in to her Instagram. And then set an alarm for 2 in the morning. And then you wake up at 2 a.m. with her phone, logged in as her. And you scroll to all the boys you know she thinks are good looking. And you go back a year and a half on their timeline like, mm, 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 mm. And then you start incessantly liking every photo from a year and a half ago. Mm, mm, mm. Just so you understand what's happening now, that boy at 2 a.m. next to his bed, you want his phone to vibrate so much that it falls off of his nightstand, like <laughs> Then he picks it up and looks at it, it's like Savannah Simpson liked a photo, 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 Savannah Simpson liked a photo. Savannah Simpson has like this and 67 other photos. Oh. <laughs> Ugh. And then you go to that haircut picture that he just got. And you say, I really liked your hair in this photo. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Hundred, hundred, hundred. Fire, fire, fire! <laughs> Hashtag hubba hubba. <laughs> she will never misbehave again. You tell that to your teenage kid when you get home, they'll have a panic attack, I promise you. It's awesome, man. It's awesome. We took my kids to Disney and uh, SeaWorld. And uh, when, while we were there, my 10-year-old daughter and my son, probably a thousand times, I said to him, there are other people in this hotel that don't want to hear all that from you. But the Mickey key is amazing, and this is amazing, the Animal Kingdom Lodge, whoa, Savannah. There are other people in this hotel that don't want to hear all that from you. Savannah's like, no, they're not, Dad. Your father is right. There are other people in this hotel that don't want to hear all that from you. So my 10-year-old got to the Manta roller coaster at SeaWorld. She was determined she was going to ride this scary roller coaster, got voted worst roller coaster of the year. I showed her hundreds of YouTube videos of kids getting off of it crying, trying to talk her out of it because I'm terrified of heights. She was like, let's go. We're in line at the Manta roller coaster at SeaWorld. And I'm like, Savannah, I wanna let you know that uh, while we're on this ride, daddy's probably gonna scream a really bad swear word <laughs> while we're on it. And she's like, that's cool, dad. We already learned it all from the neighbors. So, <laughs> so I'm like, awesome, just don't tell mom. That's great. And uh, so we're on this Manta roller coaster. You need to understand on the Manta, you sit on it under the track, you're hanging under the track like a ski lift. Okay, so you're just right here, and then right as you embark out on the mission, it goes click. So now you're not hanging under it like a ski lift. You're, you're kind of like this underneath it, and it looks like it would be uncomfortable, and it was. <laughs> People are like, you feel like you're flying like Superman. Do you feel like that? No, you don't feel like that at all. You feel like you're stapled to the back of a bat. <laughs> flying into hell. And here's the thing, on a roller coaster for a person who's scared of heights, it's the clickety-clack part, right? It's the clickety-clack, 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 clickety-clack. And you're just like, oh, I can't look, I can't look. Clickety-clack, 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 clickety-clack. You get to the crest of the hill and you feel it, and then you look and you're like, oh, the horizon, all of God's creation. This is awesome, this is not that bad, I can do this, yay! But on the Manta, you're underneath the track looking down so when you open your eyes, all you see is the parking lot, which is where your head will be when you fall. You come down the big hill like this, facing down, swoop up into an inverted loop like this, and I got vertigo and got confused and thought we'd flown off the track and we're going into the parking lot. I was just like, oh, swear words. I look over and 10-year-old Savannah is like, yeah! Yeah! 
my entire life went into slow motion. I was like, oh, she is having a good time. It is time to man up. I read this ride as 90 seconds. Surely I can make it 90 seconds. It's been four seconds. <laughs> I'm like, I know one thing, one thing right now that I can do, and I did it. And I'm just like, dear God in heaven, thank you for my family, for my family and friends that love me in the Disney World is awesome, Jesus, and I love you, God, and I, please forgive me for the time I yelled at Savannah, I don't know why she's taking it out on me right now, and dear Lord, thank you, please, Blair, just, please, God, please, God, please. <laughs> God, please. Oh, we're done. We're done. We're done. So now I was like, not done. What? That's not, not fair. Why? Oh, yes. oh, oh, done. Savannah jumps off and is like, let's do it again. No. <laughs> you are an abomination. <laughs> we get back to the hotel. We're sleeping like boy girl because my son and daughter won't sleep in the same bed. So I'm sleeping with Walt, my six-year-old boy. I'm all wrapped around him because my back got messed up on the manta. <laughs> and about five in the morning, uh, the trumpeting sound of flatulence <laughs> crushed into the room instantly. 60% of you are like, that's hilarious. Like 30% of you are like, that's disgusting. And like 10% are like, what's flatulence? Is uh, a... <laughs> But it came into the room like reveille, like bum, 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 bum. And it jolted Walt out of the bed and he flipped around and landed on his feet like a cat. Boom. And he was like, Dad, there are other people in this hotel who don't want to hear all that from you. Your boy is right. There are, thank y'all. I've been Marty Simpson. I appreciate it. Thanks. How's it going? Nice to meet you guys. I have these two laptops. We're gonna each download a TV show. I'm gonna download it on Xfinity, and you guys are gonna download it with AT&T UVerse, and we're gonna see who goes faster. Go. Well, this is a no-brainer so far. How's AT&T doing? Struggling. I'm ready to go. We'll wait for you guys. Looks like we're gonna be waiting for a while. Don't let Uverse slow you down. Upgrade to an Xfinity X1 triple play from Comcast and save when you bundle. See for yourself. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit Comcast.com today. Hey, uh, can you help me move? Oh, you know what? I'm stuck at the office. Hi, I'm moving. No problem, sir. You can get your Xfinity services installed on the date you choose or have a self-install kit sent to your new home. Thank you. Finally get some help moving. Call 1-855-MOVE-EDGE today. Wood Innovative Group, LLC. Video and multimedia production. Single camera, multi-camera, live, post-edit, everything. Click wigtv.com. Keep it going for Grant Lolly! Hello, man, this has been a fun night, right? You guys stoked to be here? Man, thank you for coming, this is fun. I'm enjoying being part of this. I, uh, I actually, uh, my name's Grant, I just had a birthday last month, but I actually, I actually don't like my birthday anymore. I, well, thank you, I appreciate that, but now it's gonna seem weird when I'm talking shit about my birthday after you just clapped. Uh, but I just don't like it that much anymore because now that I'm an adult, my mom always wants a birthday wish list from me to like get me a present. But now that I'm an adult and I'm poor, I can't ask for fun, exciting things like, you know, video games or super soakers anymore. I have to ask for like boring, practical things that I can't afford to buy myself the rest of the year. You know, hey, what do you want for your birthday this year, Grant? Medicine. <laughs> I'm hoping for some Vicodin because that has resale value on the streets. You know? 
These glasses, this was my birthday present for my mom a year ago. Whoa, exciting, right? <laughs> Not only is that true, I had to go pick them out with my mother two weeks before my birthday, and then she insisted I wasn't allowed to have them until the actual day of my birthday. <laughs> She didn't even want me to go with her to pick them out. She was like, well, if you come with me, it's gonna ruin the surprise. Mother, I can't see. Everything is the surprise. Help. I need help. And then the day of my actual birthday came around and my mom insisted on wrapping the gift that I knew that I was getting, right? You know, because moms are silly. Mm. So she comes over to my apartment holding this wrapped gift like, I wonder what this could be. And as I go to pull off the wrapping paper, she says, whoa, 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 aren't you gonna read the card first? No, mother, I'm not. The glasses I need to read the card are in this goddamn box. Man, I hate, I hate being in my early 30s now, because I'm at the age where like everybody around me is having kids, you know, but I'm not there yet myself. We're very obsessed with babies in our society, don't you think? Like, I went to a baby shower a few months ago for a wealthy couple that I know, and another wealthy couple, no joke, gave them as a gift a stroller worth $3,000. What? That's nuts. We make strollers worth $3,000. I'm pretty sure I could go on Craigslist tomorrow and spend half of that to buy a baby. <laughs> I mean, maybe not like a healthy baby, but like a preemie, for sure. You can get a lot on Craigslist, you know? Yeah. And if you have kids, that's great. I'm not making fun of that. I'm making fun of this culture of obsession epitomized by that TV show, 19 Kids and Counting, right? Because they got 19 kids, ugh. I can't believe that show got like 10 seasons, 19 kids. I was watching an interview with a mom from that family one time, and she said, we don't use birth control because we want God to decide how many kids we're gonna have. When you have 19 kids, that's definitely the work of the devil. <laughs> God wants no part of that train wreck. <laughs> Take them. <sighs> the funniest thing people in my generation are doing, though, is they're having this weird competition to see who can announce their babies, like, that they're pregnant in the most clever way on Facebook. Have you seen this? Like, everybody's trying to out-clever each other with their baby announcements. It's weird. Nobody ever just posts words like, we're excited to have a kid. No, it's always like a picture of a table in the middle of an empty field. And then on the table is a sign that says like, Johnson's party at three. <laughs> we're so clever. <laughs> it's like a picture of baby shoes hanging from a telephone wire, so you're not sure if they're having a child or if they're asking for ransom, you know? <laughs> It's weird. It's, I don't understand why we do it because it's the only big life announcement we make in this way with these like awkward, unclear photos. You never see it with other big life changes. Like it's official, Valerie and I are in a relationship. And it's just like a picture of extra shampoo bottles in your shower. <laughs> like I did it, I graduated from college. It's just like a picture of you moving back into your mom's house. <laughs> I got a new puppy! And it's just like a picture of you cleaning up shit in the kitchen, you know? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I, uh, I don't think I want to have my own kids, uh, but I am very jealous of kids because little kids have fun in any situation. You know what I mean? They create their own excitement, and we as adults, we don't live our lives like that anymore. I'll give you an example of what I mean. I was on an, uh, on an airplane like six months ago, and I'm sitting in the aisle, I'm sitting uh, you know, on the aisle seat, and across the aisle from me is a six-year-old kid who is so happy to be there. Like, no joke, when we start pulling back from our gate, he gets so excited, he starts rocking in his seat with anticipation, he's like, Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. We get to the runway and he gets so excited, he starts trying to hype up people on the airplane around him. <laughs> you ready for this, mom? You better get ready. Let's go, glasses. Bound to get fast. Bound to get fast. We take off into the air and no joke, for the first five minutes, we are in the air. He spends at the top of his lungs just going, Woo! Flying! Woo! Flying! 
fire! nothing in my life that makes me that happy. <laughs> and you know why I'm jealous of that kid? I'm not jealous of him because of that airplane. I love that airplane incident. I am so happy I saw it. That's not why I'm jealous of him. I'm jealous of him because I bet he lives his entire life like that. You know what I mean? It's not just the airplane. He's getting into a car like, woo, driving. <laughs> He's doing arts and crafts, kindergarten class, like, woo! eating paste. <laughs> he gets put on time out. Woo! Me time. <laughs> I want to live my life like that, man. I want to live my life like that, but I can't because I'm an adult. And if I live my life like that, every other adult thinks I'm a crazy person. Right? Who's starting a conversation with a guy in the Olive Garden like, woo! Unlimited breadsticks. <laughs> Honestly, 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 how many times would I get to have sex with a woman for the second time if during the first time I just kept going, woo, entering, woo, entering. Part of the reason I like ending on that punchline is there is totally some dude in here that's gonna say woo, entering when he's having sex with his wife or girlfriend later tonight. So look around, who's it gonna be? Place some bets. Yeah. Thank you guys very much, I'm Rick. Get ready, unsuspecting TVs and laptops in a U-verse home. We're about to compare you to Xfinity. When two HD movies are playing in a U-verse home, their fastest internet slows down. Two HD movies in an Xfinity home? The internet stays fast because it's 2014. Hello? Ugh, so last season. Exactly. Fast never goes out of fashion. This is the dawn of an old day. Because AT&T and DirecTV are offering yesterday's technology today. TV from space. Space. As long as it's not too rainy. Rainy. Or windy. Windy. Or there isn't a branch in the way. Branch. Welcome to the moment no one's been waiting for. The fastest internet and the best TV experience is already here. With X1, only from Xfinity. Trial by Laughter, Season 8, The Finals! Are you ready to see who won this? Are you ready to see who won this? In second place, Grant Lyon! Grant Lyon! And your winner! 2017 Tribal after season eight, Lucas Waterfield! That's been season eight! You guys have been awesome! Watch it on the map. Watch us next season for season nine. We love you guys. Thank you so much, Mornings.